This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how to create a checkered flag like this with Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So we'll close out of that and get started. The first thing we'll do in Inkscape is set our view to custom and then we'll zoom in at 100%. We'll open up our Align and Distribute menu with this button right here and make sure you have last selected chosen from this drop down on the right and then we'll open up our edit objects colors gradients and stroke menu with this button right here and the first thing we're going to do is draw a square so we'll go to the uh, create squares and rectangles tool and we'll hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfect square like that and then we'll take the opacity and drop this in half about in half now we'll go back to the select tool. I'm actually going to enlarge this a little bit. I'm just going to hold control and grab this bottom arrow and make this a little bigger. Maybe about that big. That's pretty good. And the next thing we'll do is I'll click off of the graphic to deselect it. And I'm going to go to the uh, edit, um, the draw bezier pen, um, draw bezier curves pen, the bezier pen. So once we have that tool selected, we'll bring this up here to the left and start this point just outside of this box and click on that. And we could hold control on the keyboard and bring that line straight across the box and end it on the other side over there. And then click. And we can let go of control and press enter on the keyboard. And it has created a line there. And now we'll go to the edit paths by nodes tool and click on that. And we're going to grab this line and just drag that up a little bit up here. And then we'll come over here and click on this node so we get these handles. And I'm going to grab this handle and just drag that down like that. I'm going to take this line and bring that up a little bit. We want to create a fluid line that goes up, dips down, and then comes back up just like this. Something like this. I'd say that's pretty good. Once you get it there, we can go back to the Select tool. And we're going to convert that from a stroke into a path. So we'll go to Path, Stroke to Path. Right click that, go to Duplicate. Hold Control on the keyboard and click and drag this copy down to about here until the space between those two lines represents a good uh, height for what you think a waving flag should be. I'd say that's pretty good right there. I may even move this up a little bit. That's pretty good. And once we do that, we could hold Shift and click on the other line so we have both of those lines selected and go to Path, Union. And then we'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on the black square in the background so we have them all selected and go to path difference. And what we'll do now is go to path break apart. And that's going to break that up into three different pieces. And what we could do now is hold shift in the keyboard and click on this piece in the middle that's going to be the flag. We'll click on that to deselect it. And we'll only have now we'll only have these top and bottom pieces selected. We could press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. And here you can see we have the shape of our flag. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this and I'm going to right click it and go to duplicate. And I'll turn that red. And then I'll right click it and duplicate it again and turn that blue. And then I'll hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this copy down just a little bit. Maybe about that much. Maybe a little further about that much that's pretty good and then what we're gonna do is hold shift and alt and click on that blue flag again to select the red copy behind it and once we have them both selected we'll go to path difference and what we can do now is right click on this and go to duplicate hold shift in the keyboard and click on the flag graphic and let's align the bottom edges so click on the button that says align bottom edges and there you have that. We can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And then let's click on just this bottom stripe down here. And we'll right click that and go to duplicate. And then while holding control on the keyboard, we can click and drag this copy up about this much. And while still holding control, press the space bar. While holding down the left click and the control at the same time, press the space bar. And it's going to create a copy beneath it. And we're holding control and the left mouse click the whole time. We're just going to drag this one up, press spacebar again to create another copy. Drag this one up, spacebar, and then finally we'll leave this one right here. 
Now let's click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And then we'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on each of these red stripes so we could have them all selected. And once we have them all selected, we could space them out evenly by coming down here to the, to the distribute panel and clicking this button that says make vertical gaps between objects equal. Go ahead and click on that. And then we'll go to path union. And then we could take this graphic and move it off to the side over here. And I'm going to press down on the mouse wheel and move the mouse in order to paint the pan the page over if you don't want to use the uh, scroll arrows down here. The mouse wheel, pressing down on the mouse wheel is a, a nice way to do that. And the next thing I'm going to do is create a long rectangle going vertically, maybe about the same thickness as these lines right here, but going vertically. So let's come to the rectangle tool and let's create our rectangle, our vertical line, maybe about that thickness. That's pretty good. Then we can go to our select tool, hold shift in the keyboard and click on those red stripes. And we're going to align that on this on the horizontal axis. We're going to center it on the horizontal axis and then we're going to align the left edges and then click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Then we'll click on just this blue line right here. We'll right click that and go to duplicate, hold shift in the keyboard and click on those red stripes. And we'll go to this button right here that says align right edges. Go ahead and click on that. And it's going to put a copy of that blue line over to the right. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And what we'll do next is we'll click on just this red, this, this uh, blue stripe right here. We'll right click that and go to duplicate. And again, we're going to hold control and click and drag this copy over about this much. And while holding control and the left click button on the mouse the whole time, we're going to press space bar and just move this along and pressing spacebar to create copies at every individual point. So once I get it to about there, I'm going to just let go of everything and leave that right there. And then I'm going to hold shift in the keyboard and click on each of those blue lines. So I have them all selected. And once you have them all selected, we're going to space them out evenly by coming down to the distribute panel again. And we're going to click the button that says make horizontal gaps between objects equal. Go ahead and click that and it's going to space them out evenly. And then we can go to path union. And what we'll do now is we'll click on this flag, this black flag graphic. We'll right click that and go to duplicate. And then we'll hold shift and click on the red stripes right there. And let's align the left edges and center it on the horizontal axis. And then click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Now let's click on these blue stripes right here and then hold shift and click on that black flag copy we just created. And we'll go to path intersection. And then we can click and drag over both over this whole section of the uh, graphic right here, both the blue stripes and the red stripes, so we have them both selected, and go to Path Union. And what we'll do now is hold Shift on the keyboard and click on that black flag graphic right there, and we'll center that on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. And I'm going to press down on the mouse wheel to pan the page back over. And you can see what we have set up here. I'm going to click off of the graphic to deselect everything and then click on just the red, this red grid object right here. And you'll know you have that selected because you'll see a red stripe down here at the bottom left hand side of your screen. And with that selected, we'll go to path, break apart. And then we can click off of the graphic, deselect everything. And if you zoom in, you could see what, what that did. That broke that up into a bunch of individual little pieces. So once we have that broken up, let's actually zoom back in over here. To zoom in, you could use the magnifying glass tool, or what I like to do is hold control on the keyboard and roll upward on the mouse wheel. So let's click on just this, uh, this red part right here, and let's press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And then we could zoom back out to 100% by pressing 1 on the keyboard. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go and delete every other box from each row. And we're going to alternate which box we're deleting on each row to simulate the pattern on a checkered flag. So I'm going to start with this one up here. I'm going to click that, press delete on the keyboard, click that, delete, that one, delete, that one, delete. And I'm going to go through and do this whole thing. I'm just going to go and 
delete every other one, every other box to simulate the pattern of a checkered flag. And once you're done, it should look something like that. And what we can do now is we can click and drag over the whole thing so we have everything selected and then hold shift on the keyboard and click on that black flag graphic up here at the right corner to deselect it. So we just have these red boxes selected. And with those red shapes selected, we'll go to path union. And then we can come over to the opacity. We could bring that all the way up and we could turn that white. And then we can click on the black shape beneath it, bring the opacity of that all the way up and we'll leave that black. And the final step is to give this flag a pole. So we'll just come in, uh, we'll come over here to the create rectangles and squares tool, click on that. And we'll click and drag on this graph. We'll click and drag right here to create a rectangle. Uh, you're not going to be able to see it on my screen because it's white by default because that's the color I most recently used. So once I draw it, I'm just going to turn it black with this, uh, with the uh, color selector down here. And then I'll turn on the snap to cusp nodes tool. And I'll, I'll go back to the select tool and I'll grab this rectangle up by the upper left corner and make sure that it snaps into that corner right there, the upper left corner of the flag graphic. And I'm going to lower that one step to put that beneath the white checkered pattern. And then we could turn off our snap to cusp nodes tool and press one on the keyboard to zoom out. Oh, we're already zoomed out. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag over this whole thing, group it together. Hold control and shift and scale it down so we can see it a little better. And there we have our checkered flag graphic. So what I'm going to do just to add a little more to this, I'm just going to click this a second time to get the rotation handles. I'll hold control on the keyboard and just rotate this thing around maybe this much. And then I'll right click that and go to duplicate. And then I'll flip it horizontally with that button and then hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this off to the left. And as you can see, we now have two different checkered flag graphics. So that's how you can create something like this using Inkscape. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.